Cause we love our love in different sizes. I love her body, especially the lies. Time take its toll, but not on the eyes. Promise me this, take me tonight. Thank you for that, Wagner, and welcome to the second episode of the Perfect 10 Show, where we chat about sport and give you the chance to win £10,000. <laughs> Thank you, panel, and let me introduce you to who we have here today. We've got a debut on the show today. It's from Harris, our fantasy football expert. I've got written down. Yeah, well, you want some more glamour on the panel, so I'm here. He's Harris. finally lost his virginity. Oh, Harris, are you? <laughs> Harris, are you going to the Liam Gallagher gig? Uh, I'm definitely not. No, uh, not of your uh, street. Not of my street. Uh, next, to you, you've got Pete, social media <laughs> Thank expert. You for the it's okay. You you performed admirably on the first show, so you, I'll take you've got that. a second appearance. Uh, Pete, apparently you went to London the other week to play a bit of American football. I did, yeah. I wasn't very good at it, but um, it was a good day out. I'm quite good at kicking, but the rest of it, tackling, all that, no, nonsense. Was that for the uh, Madden launch? That, that was right? for the Madden launch, yeah. and, and you met a certain West Ham goalkeeper? I did, Adrian. Yeah, very, very nice man. Very good looking. Gorgeous, <laughs> gorgeous man. Better looking than any of us. And that brings me a great link there onto Anton. <laughs> <laughs> Anton, uh, you've made it back for a second show. Thank you somehow, very much for coming. Somehow made it back, haven't I? Yeah, thank you for asking me, sir. I heard you had a pretty decent weekend with the old uh, bookies. You uh, made a bit of cashola. Oh, yes, we did, we did all right. I had a nice little sixfold come in on Saturday. Well, that gives you any reason to follow Anton's tips on this show. And our special guests. Oh, sorry, I've forgotten about a certain someone because he's not here today. We've got a video message from Grandad from his nursing home. Let's have a look at that now. Hey, up, how the devil are we? Hey, quick message for Perfect Ten Lads. Sorry I can't be on show today, boys, hey, but I'm otherwise involved. I've got things on, I'm a busy bloke. Hey, but I hope you all have a fantastic show and a great time, lot of you. Hey, quick message for its special guest, Lee Croft. Hey, remember that time we met in that brothel, son? Hey, both come out from behind your curtains at the same time. Hey, almost ended up bloody jousting. <laughs> Not frightened. Hey, and look out for Anton's top tips. Lad had a dirty double on last week with Thegsy turn at Thaston Villa. Hey, came in last minute. Hey, I once had a dirty double with a set of twins back in the hotel room after a night out. Oh, I had me way with him. Hey, Terry says to me, how do you bloody tell them apart, twins, when you're having to do with him? I said, it's easy, Terry. Hey, Francine had a big pair of tits and Jeff had a moustache. <laughs> I'm not frightened. Take care. Well, thanks for that, Grandad. Uh, let's move on to introducing our special guest for today is former Man City, Norwich and Derby midfielder, Mr Lee Croft, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> now, on the Perfect 10 show, we don't just provide top quality content, questionable, but we also give away top quality prizes. And this week, Lee has kindly brought in one of his match-worn Norwich City shirts, and he's also signed it, and you have to stick around and comment in the comments below what Lee's last perfect 10 pick is at the end of the show to be in with a chance of winning that prize. Right, Lee, let's get stuck in to the icebreaker. We'd like to offer you a drink of your choice, but you have to give us your best drunken story in exchange for that. So first of all, which drink would you like? Diet Coke, because I'm driving today. Very sensible, very sensible. Harris? I'll go fat. Yeah, you yeah. Go. I, know, I know my role. Diet Coke. Right, it might be a Diet Coke for today, but I'm sure you've not been on the Diet Cokes for the rest of your career. What's your best drunken story you've got for us today? Uh, I think the, I'll give you a funny one that's probably, I, I can probably say on air. <laughs> was, uh, I think one of my favourite ones was at Norwich, and we had a guy called Matty Patterson, who signed from Newcastle at the time. And, um, he, we, he got nicknamed Party Patter because he loved going out. And one night, I think it was a Saturday night, we went out. Um, we all went out together as a team, which we did because Norwich is in the middle of nowhere, so we all used to go out together. Um, anyway, we found out on Sunday morning that um, Patter had been arrested. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, but we didn't know why. Uh, and anyway, it turns out he was. Um, he woke up Sunday morning. Didn't even get dressed properly. Didn't put his pants. On. He had his just. He had his shirt from the night before. No pants on. His shoes on. <laughs> Drove into training. Oh man! Right, got pulled over. <laughs> pulled over. Obviously, way over the limit. But the best thing about it was we wasn't even training Sunday morning. <laughs> 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 so, <Jimmy>. right. 
<laughs> how did how did you find out that story then? Was, did he tell you? The next no, the next morning I think he phoned one of the lads and he was like, "You're gonna have to tell the gaffer I'm not gonna be in training." And <laughs> I think it was uh, Ched Evans. It was at the time. Ched was like, "We're not in training, Pat." <laughs> <laughs> Who was the manager at the time? How did he uh, Glenn Rhoda. No, Glenn not very well. Not very well. I bet he was in the in truck. But he didn't play the next game after that. <laughs> right, let's move on to some more serious questions. You're in focus this week, Lee. Uh, First of all, whereabouts did you grow up and how did you first start playing football at what age? Grew up in Wigan um, and then probably started playing from as young as I can remember really. Going to Wigan Pier and Maxime's back <laughs> Never. here. Maxime's not Wigan Pier, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then obviously you uh, got scouted by Man City's Academy. Yeah. Uh, what was that like? Uh, good, yeah, it was, it, was, it was really good. It was, uh, I think I was about 11 at the time. Yeah. Choice of going to a few other clubs as well, but I chose City. It's when they were a proper club. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think they were. I don't know if they were Premier League or if they were like, Championship when I went there. Um, we got ourselves up though. Got ourselves back. You're a City I, fan I, as well, of course, yeah, aren't you? Fan, yeah. Bit of help. Um, I've got a question as a City fan myself, as I'm sure you all know. Um, <laughs> I want, I want you. <laughs> who would you say the best? Cause obviously, I've grown up. I watched you at City. Who would you say the best player that you've played with? And why a city is. <coughs> My favourite growing up was Sean Mark Phillips every day of the week. Sean Mark Phillips was there, he was quality. Um, he's no Wes Hulahan, is he then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he's not. He's a different type of player to Wes, but um, no, nah, probably, yeah, uh, probably Sean. I'd probably say, yeah. Uh, but then, like, you look at Sean now, and Brad's overtook him now. Oh, yeah, Brad, yeah, Brad's yeah. the man in New York now, and I think Sean. MLS legend. Yeah, so. <laughs> What was the setup like at Man City compared to where it's at now? Obviously, with the whole redevelopment, was it, yeah, just it was completely, completely different? different yeah, it was like Platte Lane, um, which was still it was still really good facilities at the time. Um, but like, and then I was still there when we moved to Carrington, and that was like brilliant. And then where they are now is just different. unbelievable, isn't it? <clears throat> Did, could you ever see the club progressing from obviously you didn't know they were in Premier League to being league champion, spending all this money? Was there ever an inkling that there was potential there? No, no, <laughs> no. Do you know what I think? Because I've always thought it was always a Premier League club because they got such a big fan base and they, they are a big club. But and you never thought, especially like when they was in the dark days of in the you know, Division Two, you never thought they'd be winning the Premier League and expected to win it every year. Harris City, a big club. Well, they've, they've won the title what three times now. You've got to give them their dues. Fair play, yeah. Very good, and uh, they're getting there. <laughs> they're getting there. Get a, they've already overtaken my night. I mean, that's not say silly things. So. Uh, Lee also made appearances for England's youth teams throughout your career. Uh, played for England under twenties and played alongside a certain James Milner, I believe. James Milner, yeah. What was he like as a player? Decent as a youngster? Uh, yeah, good. Uh, yeah, decent player. Yeah. Um, Probably didn't think he'd go on to do as well as he, he has done, to be honest with you. But he's got better with age. Yeah, he really has. A yeah. fine wine. I think he's like a really good professional, isn't he? and he really looks is. after himself. And fair play to him. Is he actually boring? <laughs> do you know what? <laughs> he was a bit boring. But <laughs> <laughs> he, was, uh, he was very, very good at Pro Evo. Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Before FIFA yeah. comes. Boring men play <laughs> Pro Evo. <laughs> Pro Evo is the best yeah. by far. <laughs> he was very good on that. Adriano, 99 shot power. <laughs> Peace. Doesn't get better than that. Peace. So James Milner just spent all his time on Pro Evo rather than Pro wild Evo. nights out. Yeah. Any any good stories from that England camp when you went away? Not really. I mean, it's all very really sensible, was it? It was all quite. Yeah, everyone was usually on best behaviour. Rooney was in the youth teams with me as well growing up. From probably under 15s, I was with him. I'm all through with him, but. Uh, and now we've got him on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I say to people, I still remember when he's like, uh, he got in the car and showed us his Colleen tattoo for the first time. <laughs> like, uh, things like that. Did you have to pretend you liked it? Yeah, I was like, oh, looks like <laughs> 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 just like it. <laughs> <laughs> was that when he had that Ford KA with Rooney on, oh, on, on oh, the number player? God, God, that was that. shocking. <laughs> he's been doing all right in America though as well. Have you seen that? Yeah. Assist that assist was really. unbelievable. Not yeah. bad. Have him back at United. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to your time at Norwich, probably where you're best remembered for me anyway. Uh, how good was Wes Hulan then? I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you won't let it go. <laughs> no, Wes is br like, let, brilliant. Um, I spoke to him not long ago, actually. He's got his testimonial. I think he's going to have it next year. Mm. Um, but yeah, like, see, as a winger or as a striker, he was like, a joy to play with. You know, with his vision and his passing. And To be honest with you, I think, obviously he had a really good career at Norwich, but I think he probably could have played it yeah, definitely. Oh, a bigger sure, club, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, surprised no one's picked him up this yeah. summer yet. It's still a free transfer, of course. And um, would you say that was where you enjoyed your football most at Norwich? It was obviously quite a big move for me. For you. Yeah, I'd probably say City, obviously, growing up. And then as a young lad, getting in the first team and stuff, that was a great time. But then Norwich, the four years I there, it was, it was, yeah, it was really, really good times. You played in some uh, old farm derbies against Ipswich. What, what were they like to play in and what are your general thoughts of Ipswich? We've got an Ipswich fan in the office, so yeah. lay into them all you want. <laughs> and yeah, no, obviously, the big rivalries. People maybe down here don't realise you know, it is a big rivalry. Uh, you know, great atmospheres, as any derbies are. Uh, I was lucky enough to score in one as well, which was... Not a bad goal. Yeah. I've, I've seen it on YouTube. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, no, they're good games and good games to play in. I've got a scar on my head from one of them as well. I don't know if you can see Yeah, you did that. No, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, right, Anton, can you yeah, jump into You don't remember because he's not here anymore. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> right. Uh, also, you were on Soccer AM for a little bit. Yeah, the bits of them, yeah. Bit of a storyteller uh, gag going on. Can you talk us through that monkey story? Because that, <laughs> that one, I still can't get over it or really understand that. Can you try and explain that a bit? That was all... Um, whose fault was that? It was Robbie Savage's fault. Of yeah. course. <laughs> it was his fault. Because I was having a bit of banter with the lads saying that a squirrel was a monkey or something and then he went on there and told told them my story which they buzzed off and then wanted me on there telling stories every week i was like oh <laughs> mate after that i used to go out like, for dinner and he's going to like restaurants and stuff and like waiters would come up to me and say oh tell me a story like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but then that got me in a bit of trouble like the manager hated me doing it at the time as well i was at derby who was the manager there uh, nigel clough because obviously i think we were going through a bit of a bad time and um, you know, I think the fans were seeing me like, you know, like some people don't realise that you pre-record shows. Yeah. So like, some people think I'm there messing about on a Saturday morning, and then I'm going to the game afterwards. <laughs> <I'm> like, Come on. <laughs> uh, any other great stories from football? So you must have a few. Uh, what is the best prank you've seen or had done against you even? Obviously, the savage. He was yeah, he was, he was, yeah, but he's, he was not horrible with it. <laughs> um, probably hooks. Remember yeah. Darren Uckerby? I'm a commentary fan, of course. I remember Darren Uckerby. I've got yeah. posters of him in my room. He got me. A, he did me a cracker once. I went on a date with a girl. Oh. I borrowed his <laughs> <laughs> with a girl, yeah. and uh, he, he said, "Oh, do you want to borrow my car?" So I was like, "Oh yeah, he's got like a flashy car. And I'll take that. Make a good impression." Anyway, so what he planned was. So, and because I, I was new to Norwich, so he booked the restaurant for me as well. Yeah. And I should have thought he's been too nice to me. <laughs> and they said no. And then I got there, and um, I went in, and I come back out, and he was driving into the pub as I was driving out. So luckily, I was too quick. I did, I did, and got out of there before. So he'd come with a pane of glass. And he was going to smash the pane of glass and rob his car back. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought his car had been stolen. <laughs> but luckily, um, oh, luckily, I yeah, got away with it. So. And um, obviously, you've joined quite a few clubs in your career. Did you have to do any horrible initiations or was it mainly just singing? Mainly just singing, yeah. Nothing What's else. your song choice initiation? <laughs> uh, Peter Andre. Oh, <laughs> under the waterfall. <laughs> that, was, that was my go-to song every club I joined. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> right. To finish off this little section, there we'll let you get away with uh, Peter Andre. Uh, could you just name the ten best players you can think of that you played with or against during your career? Ten. Number one, Wesley Hulan. Number two, Sean yeah, Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> We've got you started. Yeah, Wes, Sean. Uh, and Nelka, I love, I love oh, great great player, yeah. um, Rooney, <sighs> Ger- there... Gerard against. Oh, was there one player you played against who you thought I, c- I can't deal with him? Gerard. Gerard. Harris. Uh, <laughs> not Scholes, is he? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I, I love Scholes as well. Yeah, I played against him, but Scholes is such a nice guy as well. Such a down to earth. Because when I when I was at Oldham, he was he's obviously an Oldham fan, yeah. and like he used to come up to you talking to you asking about the games, and I was like. Like just like in awe of him. Just like, I was really real class that. Yeah. Gerard wouldn't do that. <laughs> Gerard. If you had to pick a player to have on your team, would you pick Gerard or Skulls? It's close, but Stevie. Yes, yeah, I couldn't choose. I don't know. I just what about Skulls? Super Frank? Nah. No, I'm not, I'm not in this. No, I'm not. Any other great players you played against? I, I think, think about six. Yeah, four more will do. Four more played against. I think there was one European Championships with England when obviously we didn't know at the time. I think like Silva was in it. Uh, Ronaldo played against him. 
he never amounted to anything. Yeah, <laughs> what waste of talent. <laughs> he was a joke, mate. I just remember everyone trying to kick him. He was so, he was so good. But obviously, no one knew who he was then. But it was just this guy just trying to mega everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Right, that'll do for that section, Lee. Thank you very much. You've answered all the questions very well and passed that little test, but it's time for everyone else to get involved as we move on to the top trends section. Obviously, the Premier League returned with a bang this weekend and we all uh, have picked out a moment of the weekend. Uh, Harris, you can kick us off with this one. Which... Uh, you won't be surprised, but I've gone for Luke Shaw's wonder goal. I'd say it was burkamp esque with that flick. It was uh, a beautiful moment. I think he needed that as well and uh, kick on from here. Pete, <laughs> I'm going outside the Premier League in League Two. Uh, great game between Grimsby and Macclesfield, and there was a goose on the pitch. Yeah, was a goose on the loose. A goose, a goose on, on the loose. loose. Lucy Goosey. There you go. So yeah, you enjoyed that. It was great fun. Always good to see some birds on the pitch. Grimsby, <laughs> Grimsby, <laughs> Grimsby that one. <laughs> terrible. Grimsby actually scored a cracking own goal last week. I don't know if you saw that where the centre back just passed yes, the ball yes, into his own yes, goal. Yes. If you need follow Grimsby this season, there's entertainment everywhere. Lee, any standout moment for you for the football this weekend? City's, City winning come to yes. at Arsenal. Yeah, I mean Sterling's goal was cracking. Yeah. Wasn't Bernardo's wasn't far behind either. Martin Tyler wasn't very excited no, about it. Wasn't. No, I thought that was quite a tricky game for the first first game of the season, but yeah. handled it well. And Anton. Um, I enjoyed the tribute from the Rotherham fans to Bar- yeah. Barry Chuckle for no, nice touch. Yeah, to me, to you. That's the one. Uh, other things that are trending in the sport this mo- uh, at this present moment are Delhi Alley's celebration. Right. right, this has been swooping the office. It's it's this, it's like some sort of weird illusion. I don't know how he does it. Are you ready? I'm gonna try and pull this out of the bag. Right, I'm gonna do it to camera. Here we go. Do it to camera. Oh, the pressure. Is that, that's, that's not bad, it, is it? it. Come on, I'll take that. It's like that's witchcraft. It. Right, Aris, go on, Aris. I, I, I can't even get near it. Like I don't, my hands don't bend. I have to like pull my fingers over my face. It's just not happening. I did actually go home and tell my girlfriend about the Delhi Alley celebration, and she did it first time. So then I, she had to teach me how to do it. So that that makes it a lot less cool, doesn't it? You and your girlfriend yeah. <laughs> must have some terrible conversation. You guys on a Friday night. Yeah, then, it gets really wild in in my household. Good God. Yeah, but you could learn a few lessons, and I think, mate. I've seen your Tinder chats. <laughs> right. <laughs> Talking of you, Anton, uh, you've got a few yes. few comments to make about Chelsea's tunnel and Jorginho Schimpard oh, in particular. Go. So Chelsea's tunnel, they've now had some inspirational quotes placed inside the tunnel that are from members of the public. And to me, what an absolute di- disgrace. If I were an, aw- an away player coming to Chelsea, would I be intimidated by seeing that Johnny Public has tweeted saying that uh, uh, what, what a great player Aspilicueta is do you, what, <laughs> what do you think Roy Keane would say to that if he, if he stood there in a, in a tunnel he'd, he'd laugh you out of town absolute disgrace Lee as a former player did the tunnel make any difference whatsoever no <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought about it as much really. you're just getting on the pitch yeah, aren't you? that's all it's no, there it's for. just modern day shit housery again not for me <laughs> not for me <laughs> What if Blackburn put one of your tweets on their tunnel? I love Bradley Dack. <laughs> Bradley Dack is the best. Danny Graham, you are amazing. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll leave that one there. And on to uh, Jorginho, who's got his dog on his shin pads, I've heard. He's got a dog <laughs> on his shin pads. Let that one sink in. Um, my, only, my only thoughts on that. Uh, this <laughs> this man is the only thing that comes to mind when I heard about Jorginho's dog on his shin pads. What a disgrace. <laughs> um, there's no smoke without fire. <laughs> Lee, that Norwich dressing room, how would they have reacted if you'd have turned up to training with shin pads with a picture of a dog on? Well, yeah, it wouldn't have been pretty. Yeah, I don't think they would have lasted too long. No, I, I'm no. sure they wouldn't have. Plain black, standard for you? No, I used to just little... Oh, not the ones which only... Covered you. Yeah, no, I, they weren't even proper shin pads, mate. I used to cut them out of padding. <laughs> <laughs> I hate shin pads. Yeah. I, I'd imagine that it's one of those presents that his girlfriend's got him for Christmas and he can't throw it away because she's been like, oh, I got this spe- special for you. I had it, had it custom made and everything. Genius misses. <laughs> He's got to wear it just to stay, in, stay out of the doghouse. <laughs> you think the conversation between me and my girlfriend are bad? <laughs> Imagine Jorginho's house, right? <laughs> Moving on to Bristol Rovers, they've been in the news from last night really, I think it was, or the weekend, I can't remember, it doesn't matter. Anyway, at halftime during their game, instead of putting on the usual Sky Sports oh. news and the video printer with the scores coming up, as people went to get their pint, 
someone put Babe Station on. That's what we want to oh, see, whoa, Simon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. I had off come free view all the week and I couldn't find him anymore. <laughs> Get so, in touch with Bristol Rovers. Bristol Rovers need to let me know where, where these channels are. <laughs> Missing out. I have a friend who used to record it and fast forward it through for best bits. A friend. <laughs> a, friend. <laughs> a good friend of mine. <laughs> Absolutely shocking. Um, right, it's time for this week's panel's predictions. Last week, uh, everyone did pretty well. Grandad got three points by predicting City to be Arsenal 2 0. You two got a point each for predicting City to be Arsenal. And I said, I don't know why, I said Arsenal would beat Man City. I think I was trying to be cool and press you. Trying to wind me up more than anything. Yeah. Being different than me. But that puts me bottom of the leaderboard, so I'm going to be more sensible this week. Uh, this week's game is Chelsea v Arsenal, so we'll just go around getting our score predictions. Of course, it's three points for a correct score and one point if you get the correct result. Uh, Harris, we're going to start with you. Chelsea obviously got off to a fine start. Arsenal, less so. I think 1-1. I think Arsenal got a hard, hard press against City, but I think they'll, they'll do all right against Chelsea. I'm going to go... We stick by my score last week, so Arsenal are going to lose 3-1 to Chelsea. I think it's still going to take a lot of time for Emery to get what he wants. I think just Chelsea's players are just superior. They can't pass from the back. If against you, they were terrible. No, so I think Chelsea, 3-1. Lee, were you impressed with Sarri and Chelsea at the weekend, a 3-0 win at Huddersfield? Yeah, I think Chelsea, yeah, I like Chelsea. I just like, you know, the likes of Hazard and that, they're just good to watch, aren't they? Um, do you want? Do you need a score or do you just yes, want who's going to win? I need a score. Right, Chelsea, 2-0. 2-0 Chelsea, Anton's come around to you. Um, I think the influence of Kante and now Jorginho in the centre of the park as well will be a really big thing for Chelsea this year and 2-1 Chelsea over Arsenal this week. I think I'm going to go with the consensus as well, and I'm going to back Chelsea. I'm going to say they're going to win 4-1. Oh. 4-1. Let's have some goals, let's have some action. Right, let's move on to some other sports. Tyson Fury returns for his second fight back this weekend. He is fighting against Francesco Pianetta, I believe it's pronounced. Oh, sh- oh, sh- <laughs> Pete, thoughts on Tyson Fury? I think Tyson Fury is the man. He's the lineal heavyweight champion of the world, I think. It's still, I think he might have one more fight before Wilder because I still think he's got a bit of ring rust. But if he gets back to his best and how he was against Klitschko, I think he'll just outschool Wilder and Joshua and just everyone. I think he's very impressive. Lee, you keep an eye on Tyson Fury. What do you think of him? Yeah, no, I like him. I think he's just one of them guys and he's down to earth, normal, normal guy. And I think it's great what he's done. Um, not the taking the drugs bit right <laughs> no, but yeah no I think he'll come back uh, I think he's getting back in shape and hopefully he can uh, get a good good win yeah I think we all agree he should get through this fight with relative ease um, his Instagram singing as well singing in his car Harris what do we make of that yeah he's a bit of a character isn't he uh, I, like obviously I'm not a boxing expert but I obviously know Tyson Fury because he's such a big personality so I kind of like stuff like that it gets fans involved but um, yeah his, his voice is atrocious isn't it? <laughs> he's a maverick it's one way of putting it. <laughs> also coming back this week, we have in the uh, television sphere, I believe Anton, Celebrity Big Brother is returning. This See, week. yes, Celebrity Big Brother is back on our screens and after my success with Love Island this year, I've decided that I think I'll be having a bet on Celebrity Big Brother. Tasty. <clears throat> and at the top of the market, there's two young, attractive males. We've got Jason Grimshaw... Real name, Ryan Thomas, Jason from Coronation Street. Oh, yeah, he, he's the favourite at the moment at 11 to 4. And then there's Dan Osborne, who was on, on TOWIE, I believe, and has a very big Instagram following. No idea. <clears throat> and for me, you look at Ryan Thomas, both his brothers have been in reality TV shows, Adam and Scott, uh, one was in Love Island, one was in I'm a Celebrity. They both did very well. A lot, there's got a lot of young female watchers of Big Brother and I believe he will be there or thereabouts at the end. We, we know women like him. He's had a lot of good looking women in Weatherfield. You've got the likes of Candice, Maria, Eva. You like your Corey, don't you? Can't so I used to tell him it's not actually real. <laughs> this lad is going far. But what I will say, what, what, there's, there's people who make a good, a good living off betting on these kind of events nowadays. Not you. Not me. <laughs> not me. What I will say is Dan Osborne has more than double the following of Ryan Thomas over, it's be a huge over influence. Instagram. And th- these things matter now in the voting. They do. So four, four to one, Dan Osborne. Not, not for me. I'd rather set the 11 to 4 on Ryan Thomas. You've got previous winners like Scotty T. Um, Stephen Burr, he fits this profile. 
that's the one for me. Very good. Uh, Lee, <laughs> would you ever do a reality TV show? And if you had to pick one to go on, which one would you pick? For me, it's got to be Armour Celeb. I'd smash Armour oh, Celeb. Oh. Yeah, get me out of it. What, with like yeah, 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 I'd probably pick that one. But I don't, I would, I'd be terrible. Oh, what, you like with Creepy Crawlies? Nah, rubber, yeah. I hate, I hate them. I won't, I won't be able to eat any of that. Uh, I, oh, I, I think I'd be good at Big Brother. Go in, rough a few people up. Give it all that. Give it <laughs> all that. You know, I'll be the maverick. I'll be the maverick. You know, I'll get the public. Public would hate me, but they want to keep me in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. You've got to have a personality yeah, to be on exactly. that show, though, so I think you'd struggle. Yeah. Harris? Oh. <laughs> I'd, go, I'd go with I'm a Celeb. I think it's like a free holiday, isn't it? It'd be fun. And Tom, what about you? The Voice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd have a new one, the jump, Simon. Oh, yes, yes. I forgot about that one. Bit is that still going? It, somehow. Did Brad still Brad going? That show is yeah, shocking. Yeah, it's, it's not the greatest watch, but I'd have a do with a bit of scheme. Very good. Have you ever been to the No longer a middle class holiday. Oh. Are you Anybody can selling... go skiing nowadays. It used to be for the middle classes. Ryan Ur, easy jet, 50 quid. Oh, Airbnb, your chalet, jobs are good. And... <laughs> You've got commission from holiday companies. From Judith Chalmers. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's move on away from skiing package holidays that Anton's <laughs> trying to sell. Thank God. And there's only one place to go next. He was a hit last week, and he's going to be a hit again this week. We're going to move on to Wagner's Wager. Hello, guys of the Perfect Ten. Had a stinker last week. But this week's Wagner's Wager is... Leicester, West Ham... And Aston Villa, all to win, eight to one. We found love, so don't fight it. Life is a roller coaster, we just gotta ride it. I need you, so stop hiding. Our love is a mystery, girl, let's get inside it. What do we make of that string vest, Harris? Uh, it's phenomenal. The man just tops it every week. That was remarkable, Lee. You're singing better than that, worse than that? Mm, worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> now, Anton, you uh, did pretty well last week, I think, with your little uh, wager. Yes, there were scenes in my living room come five to five last week as Aston Villa bagged a 95th minute winner to bring home the dirty double. Um, it was them and Exeter in the double last week who got past Morecambe at an absolute canter, as we thought they would. And this week, <coughs> this week I'm back with another double, not quite as dirty this week. <laughs> and I'm starting off with West Brom to beat QPR. West Brom, you've got Jay Rodriguez and Dwight Gale in attack. That's some serious firepower for the championship. They got the first win last week against Norwich. Rodriguez bagged two, bagged two um, for me, home win. Home win, that's about 7 to I 10. I think Ashley Barnes at West Brom is incredible. He's on loan from Leicester and he's Har- scored. Har- Harvey, Harvey Barnes. Harvey Barnes. Sorry, yes, Ashley yes. Barnes. Is Ashley Barnes play for Burnley? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's an easy mistake to make. Get him gone. Get him booked. So you're right though, they, are, they, they look strong and they, they'll come to, they need to adapt to the league a bit and they'll, they'll be there and thereabouts at the end with we'll, we'll West Brom of every faith in that. The second part of the double this week is come, comes from the south coast down at Portsmouth where I fancy them to be Oxford, Cole Robinson's Oxford, they've, they've not scored yet in the league, they've been beat on both occasions, conceding six, Portsmouth away last, last weekend at Blackpool, solid, solid 2-1 win, that's a get there at 11, 10 to 11 mark this week, the double, I, th- I think it pay, pay, pays, what does it pay, about 9, nine to 4, I think that is, is top price, and for me, e- easy, easy double for this weekend. You are certainly on form, so uh, you you. can back that bet in the comments below. We'll put a link to uh, Anton's tip. Pete, you're in the spotlight. It's time for your tweet of the week. Here we go. Where's the jingle? Oh, shit, yeah. Uh, (laughs) Pete's tweet of the week. Still need it. Still waiting on the jingle. We can edit that in later. (laughs) I'm just presuming we have a jingle now, so I just forget to do it. What budget? Yeah, just just step up, chap. Producer Charlie. (laughs) Right, the tweet of the week. It says... Richarlison <laughs> had such a good day for you. Richarlie dad and Richarlie mum must be proud. I think that is genius. Right, this is meant to be Pete's best tweet. I think that's brilliant. It got over 2,000 retweets. There's He's a reason retweeting it got. The, the smart people. <laughs> smart, <laughs> smart people. If you're, not, if you're not, then sort it out. It's a brilliant, brilliant tweet. Very witty. I enjoy my shit jokes, but that's... Too far. <laughs> we couldn't come up with that on the sportsman. <laughs> yeah, that's the that no truth. <laughs> Lee, are you glad that Twitter and social media wasn't massive when you were in your in your prime? 
Would you have got some big abuse? Would you have had it? And would you have got some dogs abuse or, or praise on that? Uh, probably both. Yeah, I think it's. I think if you have a good game, then it's great to go and have a look what people are saying. But yeah. do you know what? It's so hard though as well if you have a bad game because you just. You, you just go to it, don't you? Yeah. Just you, so you just go to it, and you've got, right, yeah. you've got, you've got to be strong. Around. You've got to be strong mentally to have social media, especially when you're playing. Yeah. Yeah. It certainly is tough to deal with. Right, Harris. There's a reason we've welcomed you on the show. Oh, it's yeah. fantasy football time, and uh, yes. the Sportsman Office had a very exciting draft. I don't want to talk about it. Before the Premier League, and there was a big fixture the opening day weekend, which was Anton v Harris. All I can say. The reigning champions. Rocks. I won this tremendous looking trophy <laughs> last year. It's been on the mantel piece. Make that yourself. Summer, yeah. It's a... That's where all our budgets go. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we don't have a jingle for me. So, Harris, uh, who have you got in your draft team, first of all? Who was your first pick? Well, I had Paul Pogba in my draft, which I know he's a bit of a. Any, well, people like to criticise him, but Poor I think. Man's I, think I think he came back against Leicester. He'd had four days training, and I thought he was the best player on the pitch. I thought he was brilliant. And I think if he can keep that focus, then that'll be, that pick will turn out well at the end of the season. Pete, did you get off to a winning start? I did not, no. I got a, I had a decent score, but my opponent, just the midfield, I think he had Richarlison. I think he just had a load of players that scored, that weren't very good, that scored. So I got absolutely <laughs> just battered. Oh dear, right, Harris, let's yes. move back to you. Uh, who is your one to watch this year on fantasy football? In fact, everyone, if you have a little think, will come round. But I mean, Harry starters off. It's quite an obvious one. I'm going to go with Richarlison. Now, he's just scored two goals. Well, that is not a surprise pick. The thing is, because at the start, at the start of the year, I was sorry, in the summer when he made this move, 50 million, I thought, what are they doing paying that for him? Like, he had a good start at Watford and then completely faded. But I watched, I watched Everton v Wolves and he was impressive. Like, he was very clinical. And I think... Everton are playing, well, I think they're at home, and I think he'll, uh, I forgot any of their actually. Research. This is a good research, this is a good research. I think you can get him around six million for fantasy, and I think you've got to have him in your team. So you're basing it off one game? Well, you could say that, but I think, I think Everton, in general, the team look good to me, and I think he'll be a key part in their success. Pete, have you got one player we should keep an eye on in the Premier League this season? Um, I think, I mean, if I'm going for a standard player, like, not a surprise package, I go with Sterling. I think he got the third... <laughs> third most amount of points last season he scores that's why he's in my team he scores, he scores 20 goals like, he'll get you 20 goals 15 assists I think if I can't really think of a surprise Sterling one. is fine we'll Sterling. take Sterling, Sterling. Sterling. whilst we're on that with Sterling I actually backed him this week at 50 to 1 with four places to be top goal scorer in the no Premier chance. League uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying he, he will be the, the top player but he's, for me he definitely gets in that top four he's already come in from 66 to 1 and um, do you, how many did he get last season? He got Pink, 20 league goals, 23 in all competitions. Yeah, and Savile's not scoring. What the amount he did last season? Sterling will be there or thereabouts. He Lee, should, have you he got should got score about 50, yeah. shouldn't he? That, yeah. That's oh, it. The, the the chances chances he missed. You do have to say that about him. His, his positioning is good. It's yeah. just whether he could actually well, finish. If he could do it this season, then, like you say, he could be up there doing bits. <clears throat> Lee, have you got a player we should be keeping our eye on? You know what? I'm league? probably going to say his name wrong here, but I, I like the look of the lad at Wolves. Never, so Never, so Never, so Never. 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 Ruben Neves, yeah. yeah. He was I very good. He, I think, think, yeah, he's been good for the last year, hasn't he? And I think, I think he could uh, set the Premier League alight this year. There's some mad stat about him having, what is it? Four touches inside yeah. the box since the start of last season, seven goals from outside the Which box. Which is insane <laughs> when you think about <laughs> it. And That's then I think at the weekend he got an assist and a goal in here, so. Yeah. Yeah. I think he could be a good. He'd probably get him cheap as well. I don't yeah. even play fantasy football, yeah. but yeah. I think he's about six and a half million. Which seems yeah, like yeah. pretty that's, cheap. That's pretty cheap. And Anton, um, mine to watch this season will be Sigurdsson. I think he's going to settle a lot more at Everton this yeah. season. Is he in your team as well? He is. Yes. Um, <laughs> he is. I believe his delivery is, is top, top notch. We, we, we know that. And they paid the big fee for a reason. And he didn't, didn't get some of the goals and assists that we thought he would last year. Well, under Marco Silva now, I feel, he'll come to the floor. And he's my, my one to watch this season. I, I think Everton in general are set for a good year. I think yeah. Silva will be good for them. I think if your fantasy team get lots of Everton players in there, I think they're going to they offer good value and they'll do well. Uh, my pick for fantasy football, I think you lot know who it's going to be. Uh, Leicester's James Madison. Why do you, you think James Madison, Simon? Because uh, he's the best player in the league and people are going to realise this by the end of the season. He played well against us. Like, he's know. got the best delivery in the league and he's going to score at least 10 goals this season and he's still pretty cheap because people don't really know about him. <laughs> right, now we're going to move on to the a, a new feature for the show. We're pitting two friends against each other. They've, they've become enemies. <laughs> it's going to be a bloodbath. Yeah, lovers have become... 
bitter, oh. bitter rivals. <laughs> It's Harris v Anton, and yes, we have stolen this idea from Ant vs Deck on Saturday Night Takeaway. No, never, heard <laughs> never heard of it. <laughs> this week, we are going to play a game of Heads Up, the popular app. So you're each going to have a go uh, performing to myself, Lee, and Pete. We're going to try and help you out, and you're going to have to guess. And whoever gets the highest score wins and gets a point. And this will continue to the end of the series where we'll have a winner and a loser. Right, Harris, you're up first. I'm going to pass you the phone and you can select your category. And then we've got a minute to guess as many as we can. Okay, that's a lot. Please let us know which category you've got. Don't just go into it. It's quite a lot of categories. No putting him off, Anton. You've got to stay quiet. Play fair. Take your time, Harris. Right, I think I'm just going to go with films. I've got to get that. Right. Okay. Blockbuster movies. Play. It's on my head. That way. Right. Uh, Fa- right. Face Amazon. Like you guys. I want to live forever. Uh, Peter Pan. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, skip. Uh, it's got Natalie Porter in it, and she's a ballet dancer. And then she's oh, Black Swan. Yeah. Sweet like. Why are you helping him? Chocolate. <laughs> <out. Chocolate. laughs> uh, he murders people and is behind a shower curtain. Uh, no, oh, Psycho. Right. Yeah. Stuart Pearce. <laughs> Uh, Will Smith and Independence Day No Philadelphia No He kills his dog uh, no. Oh I am legend <laughs> Oh no that was wrong oh. I don't count uh, Not Batman but Robin No <laughs> Superman yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got the uh, oh, Come on I watch this film all the time they, not, not the Everly Brothers <laughs> Whatever Next one Didn't Pass it Do it again there you go. Uh, Batman The last one The first one no, One of the Batman films uh, Christopher Nolan uh, pass. Next one. Look, you're oh, you're cheating. Here. Two, I should know why. Time's up. Come on, two, time's up. That was that's it. That was pathetic. You got two in there that weren't actually right. <laughs> to be fair, I didn't have much to go on there. So Harris, you got Black Swan. Yeah. Chocolate. Yeah. yeah. With help from Anton there. Yeah. Uh, you also got Psycho. Superman. You didn't get iRobot because I described the wrong film. Yes. <laughs> uh, and you also got Superman. So that's. Four points Four. for Harris. It's a weak, weak score for a minute. That's one right answer. So if I went to go second, seconds. I could have got the categories. Anton no started excuses. two to one to win this. Right, Anton, four to be a decent score for Harris, I not think. Bad, not not bad. So uh, pick your category and get that phone on your forehead. Right, yes, I'm going to go for icons, legends and stars. Oh, sounds like us, though. Aye. <laughs> Who's the icon? Who's the legend? And who's the star? You're the star. I've right. got to be the icon. I'll be the legend. Well, I think Lee's got to be one of them. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, she, <laughs> hid, she hid from uh, the Nazis in Holland. I'm Frank. Yes. There you go. Uh, oh, what? He used one of the James Bonds. Pierce Brosnan. Yes. Oh, so easy. This is bullshit. I have no idea. Right? That's, that he's a great oh, actor. Oh. Do it again, do it again. There you go. Um, oh, oh there's always a twist at the end of his film. Anton will never get it. Pass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Mr. Tambourine Man. <laughs> Mr. Tambourine Man. <laughs> Eric Clapton. No <laughs> 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 I'm not worried anymore. No, I've got this, I've got this in the bag. Uh, no, go oh, he would have got that. Oh, oh, oh. Go up again. Right, just... He's had a shock yet. Oh, um, is, he, is he in Kiss? Yeah. Oh, he's in Kiss? Yes. Yes. No, he's not Again. Uh, oh, he's, oh. He's, <laughs> oh, he got killed by a stingray. Yeah. Stingray. Yeah. stingray. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> don't know who that is. Oh, he's, 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 he's friends with um, Kim Time's Kim up. Four, four. No, I think that was five. That was four. I don't get him Sweaty. Calm down. Sweaty. He, might, he did one that he Sweaty. got up when he wasn't meant to. You did get Anne Frank. Here's Brosnan. Yeah. Uh, you also got. You skipped Muhammad Ali. Yeah, you would have got that one as well. You got... Did you get Dustin Hoffman? No, you didn't. Oh, no. You got Steve Irwin. Gene Simmons. You, you got Gene Simmons. Simmons. Simmons, that's four. Oh. And you didn't get anyone else. Oh. So, oh. it's four apiece. Four, four. So, the first ever Harris v. Anton ends in a four-all draw. That's a point apiece on the scoreboard. Disgrace. Disappointed. Disgrace. I, I feel like I should have won that. I'm disappointed in myself. Both disappointed with the performances. Yeah. But level playing field going into next week's <laughs> challenge. Feeling confident for the series, Anton? Yes. 
So the way we're going to finish off today's show, like last week, is with the perfect 10 predictions. This is where you can win on the sportsman.com £10,000 every week. And we're also giving away £500 monthly prize for player of the month and £1,000 for the person who tops the leaderboard at the end of the season. Lee, you're on the spotlight today with your perfect 10 predictions. You've got a bit of competition this week because Razor Ruddock last week actually did pretty well. He got five out of ten, so he's got five on the leaderboard. Let's see if you can beat that score this week. Uh, so I just need home win, draw or away win for these fixtures. Kicking us off is Bristol City v Middlesbrough. Tough one. Oh, that's a tough one, yeah. I'm going to go Bristol City. Home win, yet yeah, Bristol City. Uh, on to Hull v Blackburn. Anton, of course, is a Blackburn <laughs> fan. Don't let that influence you in any way. That's a tough one. You have just picked tough ones here, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they well. I fancy Hull, but then Blackburn are bombing, aren't they? They're a good result midweek. I'm going to go draw. Draw, very good. Millwall v Derby. Razor's a Millwall fan, of uh, course, so watch out. Derby. Derby, <laughs> you're in trouble. <laughs> Wigan v Nottingham Forest. Forest, decent start to the season. Yeah. A lot of people backing them in gonna the championship. Going to go away, win, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Accrington, also performing pretty well in League One. I think they got a win at the weekend v Charlton. Draw. Draw on that one. On the fence, Fleetwood v Rochdale. Uh, Fleetwood. Peterborough v Luton. Peterborough. Wickham v Bristol Rovers, the Babe Station team. <laughs> Come on, the Rovers. <laughs> Come on, the Rovers. <laughs> Playing two up top. Wait. Wickham. Wickham. Uh, Cheltenham v Carlisle in League Two. Um, Carlisle. And for you to be in with a chance of winning this signed match worn Lee Croft shirt, you just need to write in the comments down below who Lee predicts for this fixture, which is Crew v MK Dons. Okay. Uh, MK Dons, I think they're one of the, are they one of the favourites. Yeah, well, yeah. Crew yeah, won 6 0. Like yeah. yeah, so. Is that why you picked these? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> make it tough. <laughs> that makes sense, <laughs> uh, right, I'm going to go. MK Dons. MK Dons. Get that in the comments below if you want to win this signed Lee Croft shirt. Right, that was the Perfect 10 show. That is a wrap. Uh, next week, our special guest will be the best person to follow on Twitter, other than the sportsman, of course, Johnny Sharp. Ooh. Thank you for joining me, everyone. Thank and you for we'll see us, you Simon. next week. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you subscribe below and ding that notification bell to get our latest uploads into your inbox.